Hi, I'm Tessa West, and I'm a psychology professor at New York University. And I'm Kate Thorson, and in this video series, we're going to show you a range of topics, including how to structure, analyze, and interpret your data. Stay tuned! Hello, my name is Kate Thorson, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to lag your variables. I'll show you how to do this first in SPSS and then in SAS afterwards. Uh, first, I want to explain why you would want to do this. So let's say you have dyadic overtime data, and I'll show you a little diagram here. So this is a version of the stability and influence model where we have two people's physiology measured over time. We have this person we're calling the receiver and this person we're calling the sender. So if we want to predict the receiver's physiology at time t in this stability and influence model, we're going to take their own physiology at the prior time point and their partner's physiology at the prior time point to predict their physiology now at the current time point, which is time t. So in order to do this, we have to line up the receiver's physiology at time t on the same line with their prior physiology and their partner's. So I'm going to show you what this looks like here. I'm looking at my SPSS file, and right now I just have the variables that you need in order to do this analysis. Um, I would assume you have many more variables in your data set, but I'm just including these for simplicity's sake. So up at the top here we have dyad, that's just a unique number for each dyad. We have time, uh, so this is a number for each time point. Then these dot one variables, these represent the information for the actor, the respondent, or the receiver, whatever you want to call it. And then the dot two variables represent the information for the partner um, or the sender, however you want to call it. Okay, so let's look at this in data view. Um, what we have here, let's sort by ID. Okay, so what we have here, you can see I have person 201 in my data file and time points one through 10 here for that person. Then I have person 202, time points one through 10 for that person. Um, and I have the actors, uh, this is their physiology, their pep reactivity for those 10 time points, and then this is their partner's physiology for those 10 time points as well. So I'm just going to move this ID over here to make it a little bit easier. So what I want is to get this actor data, I want this to be lagged by one so that I have a new variable that says uh, nothing for the first line and then starts negative seven, negative eight, negative five. So I'll show you what that looks like here. I think it'll be a little easier once you see it. So first I have to make sure that I sort my data file by ID and time because SPSS isn't magical. It doesn't know exactly what you want uh, to lag and where you want it to go. All it's going to do is make a new variable where whatever's on this first line here now becomes the second line. Whatever's on the second line now becomes the third line. And so you have to get all of your cases and time points lined up in such a way that that means your first time point now is at your second. Your second is at your third. Um, you could have this organized in any way and SPSS will just lag it by one, um, not knowing what to do with time and ID or the way that you want it. Okay, so first we're going to go ahead and sort cases. And then what I'm going to do is tell SPSS to make these two new variables, which I've just labeled pep react lag and then dot one or dot two for whether it's actor or partner. And all you have to do is say equals lag and then whatever your variable is that you want to lag by one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this here and we'll see what that looks like in our file. Okay, so in my file you can see I have these two new variables. Here's my lag for the actor and then my lag for the partner. And here was the original variable that I started with. So if uh, for person 201, their physiology, their pep reactivity at time point one is negative seven. Now in the lagged variable column, I see that that's at time point two. Negative eight is their value for time point two, so that got lagged by one, it's now at time point three. And this, continu this pattern continues on. Same thing for the uh, partner data. So negative eight at time point one, now that's at time point two. Negative one, that's lagged, and now that it's at time point three. And that keeps going on. So now you can see if I want to predict uh, the actor's pep reactivity at time point two, I have 
uh, negative 8 here, and then on that same line, I can predict this value from their own PEP reactivity at the prior time point and their partner's own reactivity at the prior time point because I've just shifted these and lagged them by one over here. So the next step that we have to do is go through and make everything for time one missing. And the reason for this is because, like I said before, SPSS doesn't exactly know what you're doing. It just went through and lagged the whole variable. So you'll see here, if I look at my first line for person 202, so person 202, time point one, what is their actor PEP reactivity lagged? It's negative six. And that's because SPSS took the value from person 201 at their last time point. So person 201, the final time point 10 here, their last value was negative six. And so SPSS put that right here. But of course, I don't want to be predicting person 202's time point 1 from person 201's final time point. That wouldn't make any sense. And so I need to go through and mark all of my lagged variables as missing at the first point in the file. So I'm going to run this syntax here, and I will include this online as well. But I'm just going to mark these missing at the first time point in the file. So now if I go back over here, I can see, so person 202 at time point one, remember that they previously had a lagged value here of negative six, which was the, the um, prior participant number at the final time point. And I wanna mark that missing, right? Because I don't wanna be predicting their data from the last time point of their partners. So you can see that's missing here and same with the partner variable as well. So the final thing that I like to do is just double check that I did everything correctly. So I'm going to check that I have no uh, PEP reactivity values for anybody uh, at time point one. And I also just want to check that my lag variables for both the actor and the partner are the same. So I'm going to run this and get the means over time. And I can go through here and just scroll and do a quick double check to make sure that these all look the same, everything's looking good. I can also do a check um, on the whole sample if I want to do that. Um, but and then importantly, I also see that I have no data for anybody at time point one, which is accurate. I don't want there to be any lagged information uh, at time point one because it would just be coming from another, another participant incorrectly. Okay, so that's how you're going to do this in SPSS. And again, I'll post these files online. Uh, let's take a look at how we would do this in SAS in case that's what you're uh, more used to. So I'm going to open up my syntax here. I already have my file ready to go. So let me just make sure I have the right folder here. Okay. So I've just opened up the same file as what I started with in SPSS. Um, in SAS, I'm going to do the same thing. I have to sort first by ID and time. And this will make a new um, output file called sort, which will stick in my working library. And then I'm going to do the uh, just use the SAS syntax for lagging here. So first, I just uh, define my file that I want SAS to work with, and then I'm going to tell it again. You're going to do this procedure by ID and by time, and I want you to take this variable I already have, pep reactivity, and or sorry pep reactivity here, lag it by one, and create this new variable here. And then within the syntax, I'm also telling it uh, to get rid of the first case for each ID and just make that missing. So it's saying if, if it's the first ID in the set, then make this new lagged variable uh, missing. It'll just put a um, period there. And then same for the partner data as well. Make the partner lagged variable from the regular one, just use this little lag command here. And then if it's the first um, ID in that set, then just make it missing here. So same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And one way you can check your work is by doing what I showed you before. So checking the means over time. So here uh, you can see I don't have any data for time point one, which is great. And then you can easily see that for both the actor and partner variables, I have the same means at each time point. The other way you can check just to um, 
do a little spot check is to go into your data file that you created and just make sure those lag variables turned out the way you wanted them to be. So here I have PEP React 2, so this is my partner data uh, at time point 1 for this person, negative 8. Then you can see at time point 2 for that lagged variable, it's negative 8. And then it continues on, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, same thing here. So everything is all set with this. So I'm going to include the uh, data file that you can use to practice this on as well as my syntax online. Um, and thank you for watching.